matter how deadly the sub, it can only be effective if it can get to its target quickly and quietly. The first submarines had to be powered by the men inside. Earliest submersibles are propelled only by human muscle power, and this creates severe problems. It's very demanding work indeed. The air becomes increasingly foul, and they are very slow-moving vessels indeed. A new form of propulsion was needed that could keep the sub fast on the surface, but also had the legs to make it effective underwater. It would take a hundred years before someone married the greatest inventions of the 19th century with the submarine. His name was John Philip Holland. John Holland was born in a period of great technical change. He was surrounded by people who had produced the key elements of a submarine. The battery had been known about for some time. The electric motor had been invented some 40 years beforehand by Michael Faraday. And the idea of a torpedo, a, a usable weapon, had been invented by Weisman. The final thing to be invented, really, was the internal combustion engine. And so, in John Holland, we have the first practical warfighting submarine. John Holland's breakthrough was combining all these inventions in one practical and reliable design. His sub used the internal combustion engine for power on the surface, and then switched to battery power to stealthily creep beneath the waves and attack undetected. John Holland's submarine is actually the first really modern submarine. It's remarkably fish-like in appearance. It's got a hydrodynamic hull, it's streamlined, but it is actually equipped with a dynamite gun that gives it a weapon that it can fire at a distance, a very useful thing indeed for a warship. The brilliance of Holland's design was recognized and commissioned into the U.S. Navy in 1900 as the USS Holland. It became the blueprint for all subsequent combustion engine electric subs. But a submarine with a combustion engine has an Achilles heel that compromises its greatest strength, stealth. The key liability for a diesel electric submarine is that the batteries are only really useful for about a day. After that, they've lost their charge and can no longer power the submarine. That forces a submarine to surface, giving up its advantages of concealment and run on the top of the water so that it can charge its batteries for further submerged cruising. It would be another 50 years before the problem was solved and the connection made to the next part of the submarine's family tree. The solution was developed by Nazi scientists in World War II, using technology they plundered from the Netherlands. During the Second World War, the German army conquers the Netherlands, and at that time, the German Navy gets a very important invention known as the Schnorkel. The Schnorkel is designed to allow a submarine to draw air while submerged. It's essentially a tube that runs up from the top of the submarine into the air above with a valve on top to make sure that no water comes in. That allows the submarine's diesel engines to get some air to run the diesels and also refresh the air inside the boat, which allows the submarine to charge its batteries while submerged. Developed in secrecy, the Nazis hoped that by fitting their submarines with snorkels, they could again threaten Allied shipping and turn the tide of the war. But in the end, Nazi Germany fell before their snorkel-equipped U-boats could affect the outcome of World War II. Even so, the technology they pioneered has been an integral part of diesel-electric submarine design ever since. <laughs> <laughs>